Man, it's been a very long time since I've done an old-fashioned beat-down ponage video. For some reason, I just got into the mood to do one after watching this guy. Hi, James the Idol Smasher at Yahoo.com. Good morning. Glad to have you here. Um, before I get going with my day, I just had to kind of stop and, you know, tip a hat to the um, anti-theists out there who make it so obvious to youngsters the importance of critical thought and reading comprehension. <laughs> Maybe you can figure out why I got in the mood. I just can't seem to put my finger on it. Once again, anti-theists have proven that they can't read, won't read, don't read, or don't want you to read because they've made up their mind that something is as it is and no one can tear that down. And even if you do, they're going to hang on to it. Now that is irony. So, proving more that anti-theists can't read are their constant and continuous whinings and moanings about the poor, innocent firstborn of Egypt. I sense a straw man. You'll never hear an anti-theist talk about the horror that is Egypt killing Israel's firstborn. They don't, they don't, that's okay. To an anti-theist, that is justified. And it's obvious that they think like this because they always whine about God returning the favor to Egypt. See, God, if you, if you actually read Torah, if you, if you read it, okay? If we actually read the passages in question, oh, this is so going to come back and bite you in the ass, Jim. God saved Egypt via Joseph. If it wasn't for Joseph, Egypt would not be. Egypt was a good place. God brought Israel there, but it became more, it became bad. And you just believe everything that book tells you, don't you? Not a smidgen of critical thought, right, Jim? No chance the Joseph story is just made up? Tell me, Jim, where do Egyptians record the story of Zaphnath Paneah, the Egyptian name given to Joseph in the Genesis story? And please don't offer up I'm Hotep and try to alter Egyptian chronology or the so-called coins with Joseph's image on them as answers. If I have to stomach one more conspiracy theory. <coughs> and where in the Torah does it say that the reason God brought Joseph down into Egypt was to save it? Or does the tale instead tell the reader that Joseph's sojourn to Egypt was part of God's plan to get Israel into the land as prophesied in Genesis 15 verses 13 and 14? Everything, every plague that was returned, every plague that was made on, on, on Egypt was returned for what they did to the Egyptians, or what they did to the Israelite. Orchestrated, of course, by God, so that, as is recorded in Exodus 10, verses 1 and 2, in order that I may show these signs of mine among them, and that you may tell your children and grandchildren how I made fools of the Egyptians, and what signs I have done among them, so that you may know that I am the Lord. But that's written in the Bible, and as an atheist, I'm too illiterate to read and understand it, aren't I, Jim? And as far as the firstborn, if you don't understand without justification, how come I don't hear any atheists um, bitching about the, uh, the firstborn Israelite? Because they don't care. I don't know, Jim. Probably because the command to kill the firstborn male human beings of Israel was made by an ancient Middle Eastern despot, from whom such horrific acts are not that surprising, considering the evil portrait your book paints of Pharaoh, while the command to kill the firstborn of Egypt, including all males and females, from royalty to slave, from human to livestock, far outstripping the murder commanded by the Egyptians, came from your supposed god of love, mercy, and long-suffering. Do you think that may skew a few perspectives on the issue, son? Because there's one thing that an, that an anti-theist hates, and that's Jews. They hate their book, they hate their God, they hate their prayer. They, they preach hate about that to everybody else. They slander them, they slander Torah to everybody else. No, Jim, the non-theist doesn't hate Jews. It is hard to tolerate smug asshats, though. The more I look at Torah, the more I'm beginning to see is the anti-theists are um, pawns of Egypt. They're just suckers. They're just stupid, dumbed-down suckers who can't read. 
Well, you haven't been showing much reading comprehension yourself, Jim. What piece in the game does that make you? What's a God supposed to do with, uh, dealing with infanticide, huh? If you were a God and your people God had that done to them, what would you do to the people who committed infanticide? Would you just scold them? Would you send them to therapy? Maybe the government could write a law. We're talking about an omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, and omnibenevolent being here, Jim. The possibilities for such an entity are literally limitless. But for this bloodthirsty bastard, the only thing he could come up with is cold-hearted revenge upon innocence that had nothing to do with the original infanticide that you cite? This is the God we're supposed to get down on our knees for and worship alongside people like you? Uh, whatever your dipshit ideas of what you're supposed to do with people who do that, God returned everything they did to them on con in kind. That's karma. Karma? What are you now, Jim? A Hindu? <coughs> And your God is only creative enough to return like for like? He couldn't change Pharaoh's heart and have him repent of what he did and turn to worship the God of the Hebrews? This was just beyond the capacity of this limitless God you worship? Besides, what's so horrible about infanticide anyway? Wasn't it one of your apologists, one William Lane Craig, who said, God has the right to give and take life as he sees fit. Children die all the time, every day. Uh, people's lives are cut short. God is under no obligation whatsoever to prolong anyone's life another second. So he has the right to give and take life as he chooses. Moreover, if you believe, as I do, in the salvation of infants or children who die, what that meant was that these, the, the death of these children meant their salvation. They were the recipients of an infinite good as a result of their earthly phase of life being terminated. The problem is that people look at this from a naturalistic perspective and think life ends at the grave. But in fact, this was the salvation of these children and would be far better for them than continuing to be raised, say, in this reprobate culture. So I don't think God wronged anybody in commanding this to be done. Yeah, and for some ungodly reason, you can't figure out why we find people like you repugnant and reject your notion of a divine being. But Please, continue. That's what the uh, anti-theists really hate, is that responsibility factor, that everything you do in the world comes back to you. That's why they bitch. I can't believe that God doesn't want a, do, wants a you know, death penalty for adultery. How dare God do that? I'm like, what's wrong with God saying that if you commit adultery, you die? What's wrong with that? Really? Seriously? Seriously? Well, first of all, speaking as a non-theist, I am hardly against responsibility. As a father, I teach this value to my children every day. But were my children to disobey me, I don't hover the death penalty over their heads. In fact, the thought of putting my own children to death is something I cannot even fathom. But for your God, it's the first option he turns to. But let's get to this notion that adultery deserves death. Jim, you're of the mind that if a wife cheats on her husband, she should be put to death. Of course, we see this sort of thing all the time over in the Middle East today, and for most of us, we find it abhorrent and inhuman. But what exactly is adultery? It seems to be spelled out quite simply in Leviticus 20:10. If a man commits adultery with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. And Deuteronomy 22:22. 22, 22. If a man is found sleeping with another man's wife, both the man who slept with her and the woman must die. You must purge the evil from Israel. But perhaps the Lord wasn't being specific enough in these passages from the Torah. For in the New Testament, Jesus says in Luke 16, 18, Everyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery, and he who marries a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery. So, Jim, are we to put to death everyone who divorces and remarries? Seriously. But perhaps the actual act of adultery or remarriage isn't enough to cover all the bases. Jesus seems to further define adultery as an act of the mind. Matthew 5, 27 and 28, 
You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that every one who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So should we be putting to death anyone who merely thinks about sex with another person? Seriously. Now, let's see if Jim's knowledge of the Bible really is as good as he claims it is, and if he really is a man of his convictions, because apparently his God is not. Perhaps the most famous adulterer in the Bible was King David. In 2 Samuel 11, we read about David committing adultery with Bathsheba, the wife of one of his loyal soldiers, Uriah. Was David put to death for his crime? No. How exactly did David die? David slept with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. The time that David reigned over Israel was 40 years. He reigned seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. So David died an old man in his own bed, having remained monarch of Israel for many years after his crime of adultery. Now, how is that responsibility? But not only is David, the penultimate ancestor of Jesus Christ, an adulterer who got away with his crime scot-free, he was also a murderer. 2 Samuel 11 goes on to say that David has Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, placed in the front lines of a vicious battle and deliberately killed. And what was the consequence for David's irresponsibility? Was he put to death just as Jim says he should have been? Well, no. Instead, the Lord sends the prophet Nathan to David, and through Nathan, God explains how he is going to punish David's illicit behavior. I am about to bring disaster on you from inside your own household. Right before your eyes, I will take your wives and hand them over to your companion. He will have sexual relations with your wives in broad daylight. Although you have acted in secret, I will do this thing before all Israel and in broad daylight. Yep, that's it, Jim. It's the women of David's household who will be raped in front of all Israel who bear the punishment for David's sin. Oh, but then David repents, and isn't that exactly what you Christians want sinners to do? All is forgiven then, right? Then David exclaimed to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied to David, Yes, and the Lord has forgiven your sin. You are not going to die. All is forgiven? Well, not quite, for Nathan goes on to say, Nonetheless, because you have treated the Lord with such contempt in this manner, the son who has been born to you will certainly die. Seriously? Seriously. Then Nathan went to his home. The Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife had borne to David, and the child became very ill. Then David prayed to God for the child and fasted. He would even go and spend the night lying on the ground. The elders of his house stood over him and tried to lift him from the ground, but he was unwilling and refused to eat food with them. On the seventh day, the child died. Of course, even after the death of this child born from the adulterous affair David had with Bathsheba, he goes on to bang her again, so she can give birth to another famous and esteemed biblical character, the wise King Solomon. David goes on to live to a ripe old age, having ruled Israel for 40 years, as you've already seen. But Pharaoh never gets a chance to repent like David did, did he, Jim? No. Even though the Lord sent the prophet Moses to Pharaoh to show him the wickedness of his ways, the way Nathan did for David, your God deliberately hardened Pharaoh's heart precisely so that those wonders of divine revenge could be played out. I know a lot of women out there. I know a lot of women, I'm, and I know a few men as well. Would out there be going like, no kidding. I'd rather die than cheat on my spouse. We're not talking about the depth of someone's love for another person. It's not about, I'd rather die than cheat. It's about the punishment you're advocating. And when confronted with the same question, what was it Jesus did, Jim? Do you remember? Sure you do, because you're not an illiterate, right, Jim? You read your Bible. Isn't that true? Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery. And making her stand before all of them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? 
She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. Guess Jesus just really hates that responsibility factor. Hey, eh, Jim? So maybe I agree with God. But not with Jesus, and not with common sense or common decency. But I can definitely see where God's coming from. Which makes you equally sympathetic with ISIS, the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and other ultra-conservative Islamic movements. Read, anti-theist. Learn to read. Go back to school. If you don't know what the hell you're talking about, stop talking about it, okay? Okay. <laughs>